This is a program about the steam locomotives used on the express passenger trains of the former Southern Railway and Southern Region of British Railways. Many of these locomotives exist today on the still expanding private railway system, which has grown up around the desire of railway enthusiasts to preserve the locomotives which they so loved in the heyday on British railways. Scenes such as this evoke the memories of steam in the 50s and 60s. We start by seeing how the railway looked in the period which inspired so many people to become involved in steam railway preservation, the last years of steam under British railways. The Southern had a reputation of being a vast electric commuter system, Waterloo Station being the largest of its London termini, serving the southwestern suburbs of the metropolis. However, it was also the stronghold of the Southern region's principal steam services, which were primarily the long distance expresses to the south coast in the southwestern peninsula, what the southern termed the Atlantic coast. Southern steam had a unique flavour, most notably because of the unusual locomotives produced through the designs of its last locomotive engineer, Oliver Bullitt. The express pattern locomotives were of two main types, both Pacifics, the 462 wheel arrangement, which were produced from the middle of the Second World War until the early days of British Railways in 1950. The locomotives were of decidedly unusual design, as Bully eschewed conventional thinking. He introduced many radical design departures, which were, however, anathema to the operating departments of the nationalised British railway system, which rebuilt them into a rather more conventional form in the 1950s, resulting in the locomotives which are featured here. These were known as the rebuilds, somewhat naturally, and they dominated southern region expresses right to the end of steam operation in 1967. These scenes are set in the outer suburbs, where the steam expresses shared the rails with the electrified services, but used the central or through tracks, which had no platform places. Pullman coaches indicate that this is the best-known southern express, the Bournemouth Bell, which left Waterloo at 12.30 on weekdays as part of a regular pattern of expresses to the holiday resort every two hours on the half hour. The fastest trains ran to Bournemouth in two hours exactly, with one stop at Southampton. The regular interval departures included semi-fast services at half past the odd hour, which served towns such as Woking and Basingstoke, the city of Winchester, and the towns and villages of the New Forest. Many of the expresses were split at Bournemouth and served the Dorset towns from Poole through Wareham to Weymouth. The second main line served by Southern Steam Expresses was the West of England route via Salisbury to Exeter. The Southern Railway and its constituents had built up a pattern of services which provided through trains to many small towns in the West Country by means of running express trains from London. These were made up of coaches which could be detached from the train to run on short branch lines to towns such as Lyme Regis, Sidmouth, Bude, Ilfracombe and Padstow. The most unusual feature of Bullitt's locomotives was their outline. He introduced his air smooth Pacifics at a time when streamlining was all the rage. Their flat-sided appearance gave rise to the nickname Spam Cans, as their introduction during the war years coincided with the low point in food production. Whilst their appearance was the most obvious unorthodox feature of the engines, many other mechanical design innovations were more serious departures from convention. British Railway's rebuilding program was designed to eradicate the problems and costs associated with these and resulted in rather more conventional looking Pacifics, which still, however, were different to anything else on British Railways. The removal of the metal sheeting revealed a very handsome outline, which was effectively the last design of steam engine on British Railways. 
as the first rebuild appeared in 1956. From the junction for the Alton Line just before Basingstoke, steam reigned supreme until 1967. The Bournemouth Bell symbolised the special nature of Southern Expresses and is seen near the junction at which the Bournemouth and West of England lines parted company, Worting, where a flyover brought the Bournemouth line in on an embankment over the top of the rails veering off to the west. Trains for Bournemouth carried straight on at the junction, which was one of the Southern Railway's series of flying or burrowing junctions designed to avoid conflicting movements. The West of England lines are seen to the left as a train for Bournemouth passes. The two white headcoat discs over the buffers indicate that the next two trains are not from Waterloo, but are cross-country trains from other regions, which reach the southern via a line from Reading to Basingstoke. These inter-regional trains from destinations such as Manchester and York took the Southern's express locomotives as far north as Oxford, where they took over from western region locomotives. We're now going to follow the West of England line to Salisbury, which took the route under the flyover. These trains are at Greatly, just beyond Andover, at the top of Salisbury Plain, the great military area of southern England. There are some of the last steam workings at the end of steam in 1967. Whilst the Bournemouth line was electrified, the West of England line was to be worked by diesels, which has enabled these scenes to be recreated today. As we'll see, many of the southern steam locomotives survive today. And as this line is the only southern main line which doesn't have the electrified third rail, in the 1980s and 90s, steam specials have been promoted from Andover westwards to Salisbury, Yeovil and Exeter. Salisbury was always an interesting place to see steam, as it was both a through station on the main West of England line and a junction for lines to Southampton and Eastley and Bournemouth via Fording Bridge. The western region, whose line went to Bristol and Bath, once had its own station at Salisbury situated behind the engine seen here. Trains frequently changed engines at Salisbury and this gives us a chance to see some examples of the Southern's previous generation of mainline express passenger locomotives with the design of Bullard's predecessor, Richard Mansell. Mansell's final design was the Lord Nelson class, of which only 16 were built. They weren't all that successful and represented the final flowering of the conventional express steam power on the southern before being eclipsed by the Bullet Pacifics. Their heyday was in the 1930s when they were officially the most powerful southern engines, although they represented a very small advance on the previous top express locomotives, the King Arthur's. These moderately dimensioned two-cylinder 460s were the backbone of southern express workings as there were 54 of them, plus 20 of their broadly similar predecessors, the N15 class of the London and South Western Railway. Our views of Mansell's express locomotives are taken at Salisbury and Eastley, respectively, the latter town being the home of Southern Steam, as it was a true railway town built to serve the railway's locomotive works that were situated there. Eastleigh was an important station, with through fast lines as well as four platform faces on two island platforms. Semi-fast services called at the station, and we witnessed one of the last built bullied West Country Pacifics, Lapford, arriving with an up train. She was to survive to the very end of steam in July 1967. These bullied Pacifics were named after towns and districts served by the railway throughout the southwest. The eastern end of the southern system was commemorated by naming some of the locomotives after Battle of Britain aircraft, squadrons, airfields and personalities. Curiously, none of the central southern areas such as Southampton, Bournemouth, Portsmouth and Eastley itself were ever honoured by the naming of locomotives in steam days. And the only association with any of these places was the name of the Bournemouth Bell Pullman train, which we see again passing the entrance to the locomotive depot at Eastley. The locomotive works is seen in the background as Battle of Britain Pacific, number 34064 Fighter Command, backs off shed. Another Pacific is passed by an example of one of the earliest forms of Southern Express power, a class T9440 of the London and South Western Railway, which we'll see again later. The only difference between the West Countries and Battle of Britain's 
was in the shape of their name plates. There were 110 of them in total, split into 66 West Countries and 44 Battle of Britons. 60 of them were rebuilt at Eastleigh Works before the imminent end of steam on British railways brought the programme to a halt. The last type of Southern Express locomotives we see is an example of Mansell's schools class, 40 of which were built in the early 1930s. They were more successful than the Lord Nelsons and were an amalgam of the design of that class and the King Arthur's. Eastleigh was the home for the entire class of Nelsons for many years, using them principally on the Ocean Liner Expresses, which ran to Southampton docks in connection with the transatlantic and South African shipping trade. The engines were seldom used on the West of England expresses, even in their heyday. So our final views of the way it was are decidedly unusual, with a Lord Nelson at Exeter. This was the last to survive, although the prototype, Lord Nelson himself, is preserved, but hasn't worked since a brief period in the 1980s. The Exeter and Bournemouth lines were the product of the Southern's principal constituent railway, the London and South Western Railway. That railway's largest class of express passenger locomotives was Dougal Drummond's T9 class, one of which works today on the old Swanage branch, now reopened as the Perfect Line. Number 120 sports the Southern Railway's express passenger livery. We saw her earlier at Eastleigh, where she was first preserved in the LSWR's livery. 66 of these engines were built. This is the only survivor. The engine belongs to the National Railway Museum at York and is on long-term loan to the railway at Swanage.
The NSWR's final design of express passenger locomotive was the N15 class. Twenty were built just before the formation of the Southern Railway, and that company's new chief mechanical engineer developed the design to form the celebrated King Arthur's. The sole survivor is also owned by the National Railway Museum at York and works today on British Rail metals. In order to obtain a certificate or pass to work on BR, stringent requirements have to be met. This includes a test run, usually from Derby to Sheffield and back. And it's on her test that we see the locomotive number 777, Sir Lamuel. The test route includes severe gradients either side of Sheffield Station, and the 460 was halted halfway up Woodhouse Bank on her trial run. This was perhaps the severest test for any locomotive, as it took place during the hurricane force winds of early 1990 that destroyed a large proportion of Britain's trees. A stop and restart on a bank is a good test for any locomotive. The red stripe along her footplate was not part of the Southern's livery. It had been added for a television appearance. mile or so onwards, she was going well. Having passed her test, the engine was taken back to her preservation base at Hull and repainted into the correct livery with her nameplates added. Her first run was also something of an ordeal, 
on the Settle and Carlisle Railway in equally foul weather. This train had a former diesel engine in use to provide electricity to power the train's heating system. By the time of our next view of the locomotive on the celebrated long drag of the Settle and Carlisle, a generator had been installed in one of the coaches, providing a memorable spectacle of the engine battling against different aspects of the forces of nature. Although, as we've seen, the locomotive's strong blast could force smoke and steam upwards, away from the driver's view when working hard, a coasting engine could cause problems with drifting smoke. This was addressed in southern days by the fitment of smoke deflectors, plates alongside the smoke box. The result was a very different looking engine, and was mirrored in preservation when deflectors were refitted for the engine's workings in North Wales in 1991. Only one of 74 King Arthurs is preserved. Three of 40 schools built live on. Repton is on the Great Central Railway. This engine shows us how the Mansell classes looked in British Railways days in lime green express passenger livery. They were built specifically for express duties, for use on the Hastings main line, which had restricted clearances. This necessitated a 440 design when 460s were the normal requirement for modern passenger types. The schools were an instant success and were the most powerful design of 440 in Europe. This engine has a unique preservation history. She was sold to a museum in the United States of America and spent 25 years on the other side of the Atlantic. 
She was repatriated at the end of the 1980s and restored to working order in Yorkshire, moving to the Great Central in 1991. Our second schools works on former southern metals on the Bluebell Railway in Sussex. She shows the original form of the class without deflectors and in southern livery. This engine was originally built with deflectors, as seen when she inaugurated the Bluebell Railway's northern extension. The third preserved schools is owned by the National Railway Museum and is on static display in York. Most prolific of all preserved locomotives are the bullied Pacifics. 30 of the 140 built have been saved for posterity. Most notable perhaps is the first and so far only one of the original spam can designs to be allowed to work on BR, City of Wells. For once, a Derby departure isn't a test, but a run to the south to work on her old stamping ground, the southern's west of England main line. Wearing perhaps incongruously the full golden arrow regalia from the other end of the southern, City of Wells is next seen being turned at Yeovil Junction, the limit for steam in the 1980s. She'd run down from Salisbury as part of a series of steam workings organised by the enterprising management at Salisbury Station, headed by Gerald Daniels, who's seen on the turntable control platform as the engine comes towards us. Perhaps the highlight of seam working in the 1980s was the celebrated inspection car run when a train ran just ahead of City of Wells on the West of England main line to enable us to get these views of a locomotive at speed. It said she reached 92 miles an hour at one stage.
The Atlantic Coast Express was the Southern's best known train on this route, Europe's most multi-portion train. The engine also gives us a flavour of what it's like to drive a steam engine over the Settle and Carlisle. The only streamlined Battle of Britain to work so far is 257 Squadron, which is seen on its intended final home, the Swanish Railway, when first restored. She looks different to City of Wells by reason of her nameplates and high-sided tender. The engines were built in this form. This locomotive has already seen service on five railways, as well as a brief appearance on British rail metals. In winter weather again, we see it on the East Lancashire Railway. Perhaps the best known place to see bullied Pacifics is the mid Hans or Watercress line. Four of them are preserved here, of which two have worked, Swanage and Bodmin. In 1991, a foretaste of one of the others still to come was seen at Rockley. Tangmere will be the second spam can on this line when completed. This was really Swanage in disguise. The rebuilt example is Bodmin, the first of the rebuilds to return to work in 1979 and the flagship of the mid Hans. This has been the only preserved railway on which two West countries have worked regularly together.
Swanage has worked in a number of geysers in addition to the Tangmere swap. She's had three different tenders. Bully Pacifics regularly ran over the Mid-Hants in its BR days. It was a diversionary route for the Southampton and Bournemouth main line. So far, no Battle of Britain rebuilds have returned to work. The second rebuilt West Country is Tor Valley, which, unlike Bodmin, has a BR ticket. She's worked all over the country and is seen heading for Shrewsbury, out of crew. Tor Valley has also flown the bullet flag on the North Wales main line and makes plenty of smoke even on a hot summer's day. She was the first rebuilt bullied Light Pacific on the Settle and Carlisle. In its original form, number 34004 Yeovil had worked here during the 1948 British Railways locomotive exchange trials.
This engine doesn't bear shields or crests, just nameplates. Many of the later West Countries, but only one Battle of Britain, had no crests. Our next shot is of the engine blistering along on the southbound Settle and Carlisle run. The West Countries and Battle of Britons are known as Light Pacifics, or Lightweights. This is because they were a slightly scaled-down version of Bullitt's original Pacific design, the Merchant Navies. Thirty of these were built, and the oldest to survive is this engine, Canadian Pacific, which works on the Great Central Railway in Leicestershire. The Great Central promises to be the main line preserved railway, as it's to install double track for much of its length, as evidenced here at Swithland Siding. Canadian Pacific was built in 1941 and was fully restored by 1990. In 1991, she visited the East Lancashire Railway, her only other venue to date. In theory, she's eligible to work on British Rail metals, but so far she hasn't been booked in for her test. The same group which purchased and restored 257 Squadron has also rebuilt 35027 Port Line, which is seen working on the Bluebell Railway in traditional Golden Arrow livery. This engine was one of those dedicated to this service in BR days. Perhaps the best known merchant navy is Clan Line, which was purchased directly out of BR service in 1967 and has worked on BR metals ever since, except for her periods of maintenance. Our views of this engine, the last to be rebuilt by British Railways, commences with some runs from London Marylebone to Derby. This takes her over former Great Western lines through Birmingham suburbs. North of Birmingham, Midland metals are traversed. Note the headboards in the traditional southern style for named express trains.
Again, we visit Derby, and not for a test. Clan Line was built in 1948, and was therefore a British Railways engine, although to a southern design and order. The merchant navies resembled the original Spam Can West Countries when built, but unlike that class, all 30 were rebuilt by British Railways. For some time, the engine was based at the Bulmers Railway Centre at Hereford and underwent an overhaul there, subsequently working on the Welsh marches. Clan Line was the first express steam locomotive to work on the North Wales coast since the end of steam and pioneered the development of the annual programme of steam specials along the coast to Holyhead from Crewell. Here she's seen on a North Wales coast express. She's also been adventurous in the north of England, working over the Settle and Carlisle on numerous occasions. Here she's heading north on her final S&C working before overhaul, which was to take place at Southall in London. On an earlier occasion, she heads south. She's one of the most efficient engines working on British Rail, and the owning group takes considerable pride in ensuring that she doesn't emit clouds of black smoke. The great days of Southern Express passenger power are recreated as Clan Line sweeps through on a Cumbrian Coast Express. This engine has a unique sound, being slightly out of beat. And we hear this as we say au revoir to Clan Line and Southern Express passenger steam. <laughs> 